Good morning all. I recently bought this Ferex 20 volt lithium ion cordless drill from uh, Aldi supermarket. Now it comes with no battery and no charger, but it says it can be combined with the active energy 20 volt lithium ion battery or the 20 stroke 40 volt lithium ion battery. And I have both of these batteries uh, here. Now, in the last video, I took apart the uh, 20 volt battery, but today I want to take apart the 20 stroke 40 volt battery. Take a look at the cells inside these two batteries and uh, see what we can find out. Let's get these things open. So on this battery, we've got four Torx T10 security screws. Uh, T10, I think they were called on. Actually, yes, it was this. This says this is a Stanley Fat Max TT10. I don't know whether that means uh, talks with the little dot in the middle. Actually, this screwdriver is completely useless because they've got the end all wrong. It's far too big. It won't fit. Taking that back for a refund. So let's get these four screws out and take a look at the cells in here. So inside here we have the 20 volt pack. Oh, I've just dropped the spring. Okay, let's take apart the uh, 20 stroke 40 volt pack. Now this pack has the more deeply recessed screws, but that's no trouble for my co-craft set of security Torx bits. Uh, interestingly, the young woman at uh, Klaus Olsen said that they're only keeping one store in the UK. I read a little while ago that they're closing all their UK stores, but she said no, Reading is going to stay open indefinitely. That's what she said. Right, let's open this one up. You can hinge it on this little sticker that covers the uh, battery meter. Uh, another spring. Let's pull this one out. And uh, yes, this has different color cells. So let's compare the cell type and then get some spec on those. So the 20 volt stroke 40 volt battery, which the tool can actually put um, these two packs either in series for 40 volts or in parallel for 20 volts. This has LG HE4 cells and the 20 volt pack has LG HD2 cells. So let's get the data sheets and just compare those two cell types. So I've got data sheets from LG Chem. We've got the HD2 here. That's these cells. And I've got the HE4. I'm just going to color those with the colors of the cells, purple and yellow, so that we know which uh, data sheet we're looking at. So let's have a look at the purple cells first. These are the purple ones. And they have a nominal capacity of 2000 milliamp hours or two amp hours. And they have a maximum uh, continuous discharge rate of 25 amps. Let's look at the other ones. Now these have a nominal higher capacity. These are 2500 milliamp hours or 2.5 amp hours. But they actually have a lower continuous discharge current of 20 amps. So these are higher capacity, but they're not quite so robust in terms of current draw. Now, of course, this battery pack is intended on the 20 volt tools to have these two packs put in parallel. That turns the maximum continuous current draw of 20 amps into 40 amps. So given that this is essentially a paralleled pack for the 20 volt tools, for the 40 volt tools, of course, these are in series. This is 40 amps continuous draw. This is 25 amps continuous draw, because of course it's only a single set of cells. Now, what else can we see from these data sheets? Well, let's look at the fast charge rate. Constant current of four amps up to 4.2 volts. And once it reaches 4.2 volts, you drop to 100 milliamps. It's exactly the same data for the purple cells. And that's interesting because the charger that comes with these two packs, or at least is compatible with these two packs, it says it works with the 20 stroke 40 volt battery and the 20 volt battery says it charges at four amps. So that's exactly the fast charge specification of the LG cells. Now on the side 
of this. It says that its output is 21 volts. Well, if we divide that by 5, I'll do that in a sec, but there's the 4 amps. And it says that the charging time for the 20 volt cell is 45 minutes. The charging time for the 20 stroke 40 volt cell, it says here 20 volts, 2 units, 90 watt hours, that one's 36 watt hours, is 95 minutes. So it takes a lot longer to charge the bigger pack than the smaller pack. And this is the trade-off you get with lithium-ion cells. For the higher capacity, these are two and a half amp hours, these are only two amp hours, but the higher capacity you have uh, a lower current maximum discharge rate. And that's because more space inside the cell is allocated to the chemistry, which holds charge, and less space is allocated to the conductors, the uh, electrodes, which allow current to flow. So more space for charge to be held, two and a half amp hours, less uh, volumetric uh, area for the current to flow through, 20 amps maximum discharge. These are two amp hours, um, but they have a 25 amp maximum discharge. Now remember that these uh, discharge rates are for continuous discharge at those currents. I've seen on some of the vape sites that they quote much higher currents um, but that's probably for burst discharge. When you press the button on your vape machine, you can draw a higher current for a few seconds, but continuous, uh, 20 amps and 25 amps. So, so far we've seen uh, that this uh, 20 stroke 40 volt battery is essentially two packs, uh, which are accessible completely separately on these connections. You can see five connections here, only three on this pack. Uh, cell balancing presumably is handled on the BMS board. Uh, there's a much bigger BMS board on the uh, double size pack, presumably because it's just got two BMSs, one for each set of cells. This is a much smaller BMS. Uh, over discharge protection or low voltage cutoff appears to be handled by the tool we saw inside the uh, drill driver that it appeared to have the low voltage cutoff. So if you plug these batteries into something which doesn't have that low voltage cutoff, you could um, drain them right down to zero volts, theoretically. Now in the last video, I didn't mention this, but here you can see there's a little narrow section on this large conductor. And underneath it, there's what looks like, I'll just bring the camera down. There's what looks like um, some high temperature material. It kind of looks like mica almost, but that clearly is a fusible link. So if you do draw an excessive current from this battery, this link will blow. It does look like this one probably has a similar fusible link, but we can't see it. It's uh, under there, but I can see, lighting's not very good here. Let me just see if I can enhance that. I can see what looks like, I don't wanna short out these cells, um, that same piece of mica under there. So it probably does have a fusible uh, section in this metalwork. The tool that I looked at, which is the drill driver, on the double-sized battery, it puts the two uh, battery packs in parallel, seemed to completely ignore the ID pin. There's the ID pin, it's the lower connector on this pair here. The top pin appears to be temperature. The tool seemed to be interested in the temperature of the battery pack, but not the ID pin. So is it the charger that looks at what's on that ID pin? Well, uh, in the next video, I will take the charger apart. This box is still sealed, so I haven't looked at this yet. Uh, certainly the charger seems to be interested in the temperature of the battery because uh, there's a little thing here that says, uh, there's a little light here for high or low temperature. So it's clearly monitoring the temperature of the battery on that top connector. But is there another connector underneath? It's very hard to see, possibly, that looks at this ID pin. We'll find out next time. Cheerio.